Wake up. Call your boss and tell him you're not coming in today because you're going to spend all day listening to Lucky Time Explosion. Please your eyes. Whoa, today is February 28th. It's a Wednesday, uh, my dudes. It's a Wednesday. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Lucky Time oh, that's Exploration. Right. Yeah, we need your help. Follow us, share us, copy that link, do the thing. Come this with us. This is the us. best call to action you've ever seen. Yeah. So yeah, today, um, there what are a few things that happened today. Yeah, it's, we, there's a history. couple holidays going on today, right? Yeah. One Two of that them, we celebrate. We're, we have public sleep day. Pu like, wait, pu what is public sleep day? Is that sleeping in public or? It's a day for everyone to celebrate just sleep in general. I think it's specifically for narcoleptics. Oh. No, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, it must be a good day for them because, you know, today they can't get in trouble for just passing out. It's part of the program. So who I, I want to know, like, there's so many of these days, these international days and, you know, World Sleep Day. Wait, is it sleeping in public day or international sleep day? It's just called day? public sleep. Public sleep day. So I guess like, you know, I, I mean, man, it's we, okay to be homeless today and sleeping outside. I just don't think that oh. that's something as a New Yorker, you know, you should do sleep, no. in, sleep in public. Actually, yesterday on the train home, I was on the six and there was, you know how sometimes the train is oddly like quiet. You can't yeah. really hear the, the like the mechanisms of the train, the engine, like everything is just kind of silent. And there was this one younger woman passed out taken up uh, one of the corner seats and she's just like <laughs> in like every like every stop like it got quiet and you just heard her like <laughs> and i'm just like holy oh cow. my god well the first time i ever fell asleep on the train in new york i got my phone stolen uh, That's and i was like fresh right. off the boat like here from california in 2008 i don't know and i'm like I, I run down to the station there's a police station inside of the train station and like uh, just like a green New Yorker, I go up and I'm like, somebody took my iPhone when I fell asleep on the train. And they're just looking at me like, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> like, you know, what do you yeah, want us to do? Asleep. Don't fall asleep on the train, you idiot. Unless it's today, which is a public sleeping day. But it's also another day and it's rare disease day. Did it you is. Know that? It is. Um, I had impetigo once. I don't know if that's considered a rare disease. No, I had impetigo too. So just by way of both of us having it, I don't think we can say it's rare. Shit, let me think. <laughs> nope, can't talk about that. Skip that. <laughs> nah. uh, no, no rare diseases. And you know what? What a I'm bummer. pretty lucky on that one, to yeah. be honest. Thank you. Cross Who our remembers? fingers. <laughs> uh, there have been those days. Um, but also, coincidentally, with Public Sleep Day, it is Tooth Fairy Day. Um, Wait, they just lumped it in there? They just lumped it in there. Did you? Were you told that there was a Tooth Fairy? Actually, yes. Um, and I have a very vivid memory of when I found out there was not a Tooth Fairy. So, Mom, Dad, if you're watching, I apologize for bringing this up. But uh, one day, I was like, I would go in the morning sometimes and like, you know, crawl in my parents' bed, wake them up, and be like, hey, hey. So I'm laying in there. I don't know how old I am now, like six, seven, or something like that. And I go in there and I'm like, hey, you know, I put the tooth under my pillow and uh, I woke up and the tooth is still there. Oh, man. And there's no money or anything. And then I saw my mom get up and she goes, um, you know, <laughs> she gets her wallet out of her purse, like trying to be sly, gets her wallet out of her purse and goes, let me go double check and then takes her wallet out. And I see her taking her wallet out. And like, even though I was like six or seven, I knew there was no you know, real tooth fairy. I was old enough to know there's like not actually a tooth fairy. I but, totally believed it, but my parents like thought I believed it, and I was just such a little shit. Like, like I took the uh, I took the opportunity to be like, the tooth fairy is not real. You're, you're messed up. You, I see you grabbing your wallet, like and pretending like I was upset by this fact, uh, and I, just to get a rise out of them, I was actually not upset. I really appreciate you even bothering to do that stuff while right, I was a kid. Very, Thanks, mom. Very nice. Very Thank nice, you, mom. They gave I, me quarters. I think I got quarters for teeth. Though. Right. That's yeah. That's how old I am. I didn't get any paper money or um, or V bucks for Fortnite. I got quarters. I would uh, randomly go into the closet and look for change in my parents' uh, coat pockets. <laughs> and then you're there was just a trying time to Spain. You're trying to steal your parents' like literal change. Yeah, all the change, all the cash, and um, and then I still after... I catch him doing this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I caught you the other day. That's right. You got to keep your jackets far away from me, everyone. 
But uh, there was a time, you know, I uh, stopped working at Blockbuster after 1999, and uh, I got my hands on my grandma's dentures, and I figured the best way to make money at that point was to knock my teeth out, put it under my, my pillow, and just keep on doing that, finding random teeth. Wow, you got a point. Yeah, uh, you know, the just infinite look for money teeth. glitch. You know, the people sleep, take their teeth. You know, you just keep on putting them tooths under the pillow, and eventually, you know, you're going to stack up some major, you know, chunk of cash. Major coinage. Yeah, people don't realize that. You that know? is like the worst infinite money glitch I've ever heard on a podcast. To <laughs> smash your teeth out with a hammer. Yeah. I mean, and just it works, wear dentures. And, That's and kid then, logic. You, you know, you, you how many, I mean, you know, interest is, is, inflated these days so i don't know how much you're getting per tooth it used to be what like a quarter now it's like 50 bucks per tooth right right yeah not 50 yeah. bucks i think that's a little high um, really maybe i'm adjusted give it maybe give it i'm eight thinking years. In, in ruples yeah i'm thinking 50 ruples <laughs> welcome to the end yo that sounds awesome dude wait till you hear this now i'm serious Welcome, ready to experience something you've never seen before. A, cynic ma a cinematic masterpiece that can only be described as mushy. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you right now. Wait, dude, I'm... Oh, we're recording. <laughs> this is fucking awesome. In a world when there's no hope left. <laughs> right? That Actually, yeah, awesome? that does sound pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We'll have to do that at some point. Yeah, well, I'll just cut that in right there. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. That is. That sounds good. I like it. Does it work on my end? What's the guy that? What's going on? Welcome to the podcast. Oh, no, yours, yours is higher. Better. Oh, we got two notes going on. We're gonna make the new soundtrack to Dune, dude. Yeah, this does kind of sound like that. Dun dun dun. In a world. <laughs> that was that. Anyway, back to business. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have some fun stuff coming up at uh, Solus. I'm super excited to be starting uh, back our Crit Club. We're going to be having it every single first Wednesday of the month from 6 to 9. So if you're an artist and you're listening and you're in New York and you want to come like join other artists in a room, talk about your work, get people looking at your work, I think it's a really healthy thing to do and something that we don't do enough of anymore, you know? Right, and it could be used as a form of therapy too. Yeah, like yeah, you, kind of. you could tell everyone your secrets. You can just like even move away from art. Like I wanted to talk about my art, but today, <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to encourage that too much, but uh, definitely it is. It is a thing that people have um, an issue with their art. There's like a paralyzing fear of sharing it. A lot of time, I hear you know from artists, and it's a good way to come into like a. It's a really safe space. We have like a. Um, what do you call it? A um, sacred temple policy right. in our you know contract for membership, where we never share anything that's in Crit Club unless you have you know a permission to do so, or you specifically ask us to. So we're never going to share what you share there. It's a place to come get feedback and you know hear some stuff that you know people either are not going to tell you in public or things right. that you're not going to be able to you know ask to hear. Yeah. What what happens in Crit Club? stays in crit club that's right it's like fight club yeah but yeah. for artists that's after hours that's after the crit if you choose to stay uh we <laughs> have the uh, solos fight we, club you can knock some teeth out for the tooth fairy right right yeah. see you could start making money right away it's a beneficial <laughs> thing to join how Solos. to make money with your art right sell human teeth that's right no 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 but yeah, Crit Club's coming up. That's going to be every first Wednesday. You used to go to some Crit Clubs, right, in Brooklyn? I did. I went to Brooklyn Fireproof. Um, Is that still around? Is that still going on? I don't think it exists anymore. It was run by someone named Chris Stout. That's actually where I met Wizard Skull for the first time. Oh, and really? Yeah. Uh, uh, someone from the crowd asked him, uh, do you like wizards? And there was maybe like 10 seconds of silence, awkward silence. And he's like, no. And then they asked, no. Do you like skulls? I know, it was weird. And, and then no. they're like, do you like skulls? And then like another like 10 seconds pass and he's like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, this guy is awesome. <laughs> you were enamored right away. Yeah. I can't remember the first time I actually met Wizard Skull. Definitely a con artist back in the day on Ludlow Street, but I don't remember 
what the context was. So that's well, nice that you have a little origin story. Yeah, I, I mean, I was aware of his work before I met him, of course. That mm. was during, the, no, I don't really remember what year this is. This is going back a long time ago. But it's just around the time where he created the the uh, Ronald with the fries coming out of his pants. Right. And I saw it everywhere. because I, He was I, getting I mean, it Bushwick. up. It was everywhere. You could see th- through stickers, through weed paste. Uh, sexy Ronald was absolutely everywhere. Yeah, I love how far that's gone with uh, the sexy Ronald. Like something he's just been doing for so long, but just recently was the first time he ever actually painted it and like made the big painting of it. So there's one in his studio in Brooklyn right now that's rel- that's new, like he just did it, and it's the first time he's ever actually painted the sexy Ronald. I didn't know that. And yeah, I was shocked. I was like, this is really the first time because it's been so long and he's done so much with it and it's gotten so much publicity. Like, uh, remember the Japanese fry cart that stole it? Right. We talked about that. And if you want to go back, we have uh, Wizard Skull on episode one. That's All true. All the way and going two, back. Three. You can learn a lot about, uh, you know, why he started making art along with Suck Lord. So we have some and if you're cool not, previous shows. And if you're not subscribed to Wizard Skull on Instagram, you got to be if you're an artist or an aspiring artist. Because he has these um, reels he's been doing lately after he came on the show. I'm going to say, you know, maybe we... Gave him a little inspiration to do it. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's all him, though. It's all him. But yeah. he's amazing uh, little short reels just about being an artist, about motivation. Very inspiring. Really Very inspiring, inspiring stuff. Really funny stuff. Uh, and really just dead on. You know, it's all coming from his own experience. Yeah. So and, you and can't argue with that. He came from nothing. It's real life. It shows that if you just stick with it and believe in yourself that, you know, you can go as far as you want to. But he really, you know, his stories are inspiring and uh, everyone can relate to uh, Wizard Skull. And so, yeah, yeah, definitely check out his Instagram. I can't it's wait awesome. to get him back on the program to blow more smoke up his butt in person. <laughs> Wheezy, we love the Wheezy. We're actually Jazz smoke. We're in the shadow of a giant wizard skull right now. We are. He's got a giant uh, Homer Simpson hanging in the office here. Wizard skulls everywhere. He's yeah. omnipresent. <laughs> he is. That's you know, what, it's funny you're yeah. saying you were aware of his art before you met him. I actually wasn't. I had I never heard of him uh, or that kind of. I guess I wasn't in the scene for like skateboard art because I know that's how he started was doing a skateboard illustration. But that brings me like a question like these days, you know, we consume a lot of art, we make a lot of art, but by way of it, you know, we consume a lot of it. Where are you finding art now? Me personally, do you, yeah. Do you go to galleries anymore, or where are you, where I, are you finding these artworks? Oh, I, I'm a homebody. Which doesn't yeah. doesn't help, but at the same time, I feel like I have like four hundred years of ideas, so I could probably entertain myself and create till my dying day. Not everyone has that, right? Um, but I also get a little bit of anxiety leaving my place. So, uh, but as an artist, you must go and support other artists. It is not what I do at all. <laughs> I never ever go out. Very rarely, and it's horrible that that has to change, you know, because people need your support. They want to see your face over and over. You, they know that you support them. It, it it does make a big difference. You don't and, you don't need. I mean, I think it that helps. it's not just you. No, I agree that it helps. It helps. It's good to because do. If you That's not support what I was them, they will. I mean, you would hope that they come and support you. Now that that doesn't right. always happen, you know. Like I'm sure uh, I've been curating for a long time, and when yeah. you use something like um, and Facebook events. For me, I don't know if it's ever worked for anybody else, but me personally, like 99% of the people who say that they're coming to your event through Facebook yeah. don't come. I would say a cool 99% now. Does that mean everyone hates me? I hope not. <laughs> Probably I not. hope not. No, but I want to actually, let's talk on that. Let's talk about this for a minute because I heard something from um, this like, con artist financial guru guy Mm. who came to con artist collective on Ludlow back in the day when we were doing art shows and he started inviting me out to his like business mixers Mm. and I would go to those and I would meet people and you know it was it was like was there free food like hors d'oeuvres it wasn't free no there were free hors d'oeuvres maybe but you you had to buy drinks so you had to like spend your money at the bar stop but you know it was a it was a funny event and this guy 
I'm not going to name names because, you know, he's still out there doing this and I don't want to disrespect him at all. And what's his name? Even though, um, yeah, <laughs> ah, you good. almost got me. You almost got me. But, um, I mean, he's, you know, he's doing a lot of like guru -y stuff, like a lot talking about stuff. And I had some, the person I liked the most that I met at one of his mixers said that they gave him a bunch of money for like consulting and it didn't do anything for him. And they consider mm. him like a con artist and a scam artist. And they're like, you know, he sucks. And this and person was at that party. Yeah, they, that's where they. That's where I met her. You know, she, oh. she. I met this person who's like a ghostwriter, and I don't know why she was there to network, but she was. She was cool, and uh, at this at these parties, I could see what was happening. You know, it was a bunch of business people together networking about their business. So whether or not there were a lot of important players in the room is like you probably not if you're going to a place to meet people, right? You're trying to get your brand out there, there, but. You never know the cool little connections you can have. And that's why it's the same thing with an art show. You go to an art show, you meet all these other artists. People aren't there necessarily to buy your work uh, if you're another artist going to support another artist at their opening. But you might be able to have a connection uh, with somebody and end up working together in some professional or creative um, endeavor in the future. So that's a good um, that's a good reason to go out. And to meet and mingle with other artists. Yeah, yeah. I um, mean, I, I've been to an art show once and I met somebody and I just became their drug mule for two years. And that was like one of the, the better. <laughs> yeah, the better. That was one of the better experiences. Well, the oh, money boy. I made, the money oh, the I money. made. And <laughs> being filled with balloons. All sorts of balloons. Well, now you fill yourself with balloons for no money. But I digress. That's not the point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to talk about actually was mm -hmm. the idea of supporting artists, right? Yeah. The idea of support in general. And this guy, even though I have like this person saying, oh, he's just a scam artist, you know, he's a confidence man. And like, that's generally what a business consultant sort of is, right? Except they show you flow charts and they hype you right. up and they try to get you more organized. So I don't know the legitimacy of his business, but I will say he made one point uh, that he was not talking about art. And I kept following him and I was following like his Instagrams and stuff. And he made one point where he said, um, you know, asking for support or using this language of support uh, is not necessarily a good thing because you want to be like projecting strength or projecting value. Right. And uh, I think that like, you know, especially for business. You don't want to seem too thirsty. Be, right. You don't want to seem too thirsty. And for business, I could see how that would um, make a little bit more sense. And, but for art, it made even it made a lot of sense to me still because. Uh, I see it all the time where you see these artists online going like, you know, making these reels about how to, you know, support a young, uh, support an artist, do this, share it, you know, copy the link, like my things. And like I do, the, we do the call to actions on the show. They're important. You need to remind people to like subscribe, to follow, to share. But at some point it can feel kind of pathetic when you're just always like, begging online for people right. for attention there's an and for, for art for your art like oh please please support me support me support me and at some point I, I feel like the mentality of people who actually buy art is not there like i mean they they do i think the people who actually buy art have the mentality of supporting an artist they want to be their patron they want to give them like meaningful sums of money uh and because they value they understand how valuable an original work of art is but at the same time the whole marketing tactic of like, I need support so badly. Um, it feels weird to me. And I, I tend to start you like shying away from the language of supporting artists. Yeah. I mean, there's ways of saying it without saying it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there is. Uh, but I think it's good for, I mean, that's what we do here. We definitely support artists at Solace, but it's like a different thing. You know, it's like a, we're here to literally back you help you with your work that you yeah. need to do. And here at Solus, you know, we I've been curating for a long time and for a long time and they just turned out to be parties and I was like, oh man, I'm not selling anything. Um <clears throat> and the parties were fun. Uh yeah. and you can make connections and network. But you know, you get older and if you're really serious about being a full time quote unquote artist, um you got to figure out the psychology and we that's something that we try to do here for the uh, artist community that we have involved uh, we're really trying to bring collectors you know do yeah. it, a little or, bit and, of a different approach that rather than just like it's party time. and in a weird way because our room here, and still keep it fun and slightly party time oh yeah well you want to celebrate the work you want to be you know libations that's why wine comes out right but yeah i was saying like somehow this room being smaller 
has taught me a lot about like the psychology of buying art, the um, importance of having like a private event and kind of catering to those people who might buy the art a little bit more than just having like a big, you know, blowout, a public thing that is good, good for photos, maybe good for hype, but sales get lost, you know? Right, right. I, I feel like the next time I cure it, I just want to cure it a bathroom. <laughs> yeah, just somebody's personal bathroom. It could be Port I Authority like bathroom. It could be, that's, an, that's a real exciting bathroom. If you've never been to the Port Authority bathrooms, you should go there just for thrills. Oh, yeah. Where else should people go? This is anything happening this weekend we can plug before we get out of here? Yes, I'm going to see an amazing band called Omni. Where's Omni playing? They are playing TVI, which is in Bushwick. It is a very cool place to see shows. Uh, another place out there, if you don't know the area too well, is the Sultan Room. That's a comparable place. Mm. But uh, Omni is pretty awesome. They're kind of like Devo-ish, uh, three-piece, and I was lucky enough to see them years and years and years ago at Rough Trade during CMG Fest, oh. where it was Omni, Hoops, and Proto Martyr. So that was the first time I saw any of those bands and they were all playing together, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, so that's going to be a good show this weekend. Okay, yeah. Go check out the Omni show. So yeah, next Wednesday is Crit Club. Um, following this uh, first and last week of March, uh, be on the lookout with Quiet Lunch collab coming up. That'll be fun. We have Gia in the middle of the month. Stay tuned for more. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see y'all tomorrow. Toodles. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to Lucky Time Explosion. Watch the video edition on Patreon, a green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official Lucky Timers. This episode was recorded at Sola Studios in Manhattan, New York helping artists make cool shit since 2016.